Now, NBC5 First Warning Weather, the area's certified most accurate forecast. Well, I liked the windows up weather forecast you gave. We need all that we can get. We've yeah. been so humid. It's just been so muggy out, so uncomfortable. I was actually at Snake Mountain today taking a hike. I mean, the mud situation is off the charts from all the rain we've had. Mm -hmm. The mosquito situation as well, they are enormous. Like, you would have had to get a bug net or something because... Oh, boy. I mean, the bug spray didn't even do anything, mm -hmm. really. They were just so persistent. So it just goes to show you how much rain we've had. And speaking of how much rain we've had, let's pull up a list for you and show you that Montpelier has actually been the wettest July on record so far and by a lot at least a couple of inches in fact two and a half inches and this is just so far so that means we've still got a little bit to go this number could go even higher before the end of July all of these coming since the 2000s so we've certainly been wetter than normal in the last decade or two but it's an interesting to see how Burlington stacks up against other areas because while we are above average by a couple of inches for the July rain total 4.6 is our rain total for July in Burlington that is only the 35th wettest July on record. So not even in the top 10, not the top 20, not even the top 30. Many of you might be surprised by that. I was actually surprised to see this as well, but it just goes to show you that we've had highly variable rain totals across the state. The eastern and central parts of the state have been hit the hardest. And because of all the humidity and all of the moisture in the air, this has actually kept nighttime temperatures up by a lot. So in 2020, consecutive 60 degree nights, we had about 41 consecutive nights at 60 degrees or above. So this is a list of the top five. We're in the number four spot right now in 2023 with a total of 28 consecutive nights at 60 degrees or warmer in the Burlington area. But I think we may break that streak tonight as drier, cooler air moves in. We're forecasting a low of 59 degrees at the airport in Burlington. Many other locations getting colder than that. So here's a low pressure system spinning away north of Quebec. That's what brought the clouds and the showers today. It is finally pulling away to the northeast, so high pressure is able to build in. Couple of downpours, some very stubborn clouds lingering in the Champlain Valley, most of central and eastern Vermont as well, but a lot of sunshine off to our west in northern New York. That's what's going to cause the clear skies tonight as that moves in. And a little bit of a hurricane situation here out in the Atlantic, a very small one, only about 100, 200 mile, miles wide across. This is Hurricane Don moving to the north, not expected to impact land, but just thought I would show you that. It looks pretty cool on visible satellite. So in terms of the clouds tonight, Tonight they are moving out. We can expect mainly clear skies. Could be some areas of patchy, dense fog tomorrow, but we've got a lot of sunshine, especially for the morning and the early afternoon hours. There's a very small chance that a couple of isolated storms could pop up, particularly Essex County, New York, Addison County in Vermont, even parts of Chittenden County and Grand Isle County could get into some of that action. That would mainly be mid to late afternoon tomorrow, so between 4 and 6 p.m. And we start with the sunshine all over again on Monday, but once again, Monday afternoon seems like we can't buy a day that's totally dry. Could have a couple more isolated storms popping up by 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So just keep an eye to the sky the next couple of days. It's not going to be a washout by any means, and these storms will be moving a little bit faster than they have been recently. So even if you get caught under a downpour, it wouldn't be more than 10, 15 minutes at most. So here's a plan for tomorrow. You can see plenty of sunshine throughout most of the day. It's really between that three and six o'clock hour that we have to watch for those isolated storms. 95% of us are dry. It'll be a good day on the lake. Winds out of the south, five to 10 knots, wave heights one foot or less. Just be mindful of the, all of the debris still floating around. Another chance for a stray storm on Monday, but it's more widespread there on Tuesday. That's why we've got the impact icon. We'll be keeping a close eye on flash flooding concerns, and then it turns quite hot and even more humid as we go to the uh, later part of next week with highs back near 90 by Thursday.